What is going on everyone? Can you swim? Well, if you live in any of the cities on this list, you might want to think about moving, buying a houseboat, or at least some water wings because the city you live in may be flooded in some areas in the next 30 years on a regular basis. And in the next 80 years, some of these cities could actually be eight feet underwater and uninhabitable. Climate change and rising sea levels are no longer in doubt. It's math. It's happening. What is up for debate is whether or not humans are causing it, and if they are, how much are they contributing to the climate change? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. All I have, like most of us, is an opinion on the matter. The facts are, if sea levels continue to rise at their current rate, a bunch of coastal cities within the next 30 years with more than 300,000 homes worth a combined $117 billion are likely to be at risk of chronic tidal flooding. Now that's according to the UCS analysis and projections. If you have any doubts, please look up Tangiers Island in the Chesapeake Bay. It's part of Virginia. That is what these cities have to look forward to. It's happening right now on Tangiers Island. That being said, let's take a look at some of the cities that may be the next Atlantis. My top 10 US cities we could lose to rising sea levels. Number 10, Secaucus, New Jersey. Besides sounding like the name of a dirty movie, you have a New Jersey city called Secaucus. It is stuck somewhere between the Hudson River and the Hackensack River, right next to Union City. You can also see MetLife Stadium from Secaucus, and if MetLife Stadium ever floods, Jimmy Hoffa could wash up, you never know. With such easy access to both major rivers, flooding is not an uncommon thing for the area already. It can only get worse for Secaucus. In the next 30 years, it is estimated that around three to 4,000 residents, or about 19% of the population, will have to relocate due to extreme flooding. This one's in New Jersey, so really it's not much of a loss if you think about it. Number nine, St. Helena Island, South Carolina. St. Helena Island is a small island of 63 square miles. It sits midway between Charleston, South Carolina and Savannah, Georgia, with just under 6,000 residents as of the 2010 census. This population estimate could be changing as the years go on because sea levels are rising around the island at a rapid rate. By 2030, it is estimated that 3,500 homes will be destroyed or severely affected by flooding here. These islanders got a practice run in flooding in 2017 with Hurricane Irma. Rising sea levels would be devastating for this small community and would cause close to 700 million in damages. It isn't going to take much sea level change to destroy the whole landscape of South Carolina's coast. For the most part, this is only flat sea level land. The only people looking forward to this are probably landowners and real estate agents in Columbia, South Carolina. They could be sitting on oceanfront property in 50 or 60 years. Number eight, Key Biscayne, Florida. Key Biscayne is the second most northern key right next to Virginia Key and just southeast of Miami. It's got Biscayne Bay between Miami and Key Biscayne. There's a lot going on on this key. There are state parks, beaches, wildlife, tourist attractions, and a bunch of other stuff. And if predictions are correct, it'll all be gone by 2060. If the island floods, about 50% of the population will be affected and it'll rack up an estimated of 2.6 billion in damages. That's today's dollars. 2060, that could be like 100 billion, who knows. Now, Miami is right there and should suffer the same fate, but it won't. It is a major city and I'm sure, if possible, things like seawalls will be built and it'll be all okay. We hope. Could you imagine if Miami was washed away? We wouldn't be able to see the dolphins suck during football season every year. This key has some history that would get washed away. President Richard Nixon purchased the first of his three waterfront homes, forming a compound known as the Florida White House back in the day. Plans for the Watergate break-in at the Democratic headquarters were discussed and pretty much planned at the Key Biscayne Nixon compound. And as the Watergate scandal unfolded, Nixon spent more time in seclusion here. Nixon visited Key Biscayne more than 50 times between 1969 and 1973. Maybe that's where the missing tapes are. Google that, you'll understand it. Nixon missing tapes. It's a great, great bit of history. Number seven, Freeport, Texas. Freeport is a tiny town on the Gulf Coast that has the motto of where fun happens. Yeah, okay, whatever you say, dude, I don't see it. Unless you consider watching oil and chemical plants that surround Freeport spit clouds of God knows what into the air. If you consider that fun, then yes, fun happens in Freeport. In the next 40 years, the fun will come to an end. It is believed that about 52% of the livable land will be underwater by then. And in 80 years, basically 2100, you know, the area will almost be completely underwater. Probably about 75% of the livable land that they have today will be completely underwater. Now, if you look at this place from a satellite view, here it is. I don't know how much of a loss it will be because look at all the industrial stuff around it. I don't even know why this community is here. I'm sure the people that live there love it, but it just seems like a horrible place to live. 
Number six, St. Pete Beach, Florida. St. Pete Beach is on the barrier island just west of St. Petersburg, Florida. The island is very small to begin with and will only be getting smaller as time goes on. By 2060, it's estimated that 50% of the livable land will be underwater, which would affect about 32% of the population. And by 2090, St. Pete Beach will be almost completely wiped off the map since about 99% of the livable land they have today will be underwater by then. I've been to this beach. It was nice. What wasn't nice was old dudes in banana hammocks. I just wanted to grab those old dudes and start shaking them and yell, you're not in your 20s and you're not on a beach in Greece. Stop making these mothers cover their kids' eyes. It's gross. Put a towel on. Chester. Number five, Galveston, Texas. Galveston is home to just about 50,000 residents today with an increasing population. It's grown every year. Galveston is a major tourist attraction with art displays all around the city, beautiful beaches, a historic pier with rides, and it's all within a 41 square mile stretch of land that happens to be an island. Most of this island could be almost wiped away in 40 years should sea levels continue to rise. About 20% of the population would have to leave behind their homes and relocate. It's expected to see about $2.4 billion in damages if the sea level rises. That's today's dollars again. Galveston was the site of one of my favorite weekends I've ever had. Now, it was in the 90s, and I've heard that it isn't as nice anymore. I haven't been in, you know, a couple decades, but it was really nice when I was there. It, it'd be sad to see it go, though. I mean, come on. This is where Barry White was born. We have to save Galveston for Barry White's memory. Wait, hold on. I mean, if he's dead. Yep, he's dead. 2003. Looks like he had a stroke. Then he died a couple years after the stroke. Or a year after the stroke. They scattered his ashes on the beaches of California. Too bad they didn't spread him in the Gulf of Mexico. He could actually be coming back home sometime. Number four, Wilmington Island, Georgia. Wilmington Island is right outside of Savannah, Georgia, and I've been here more than a few times. They used to have a bar not far from Wilmington Island that they actually named after my cousin's ex-wife. Some of my army buddies and I would hit happy hour at the Sea Hag pub a few times a month. It was a good time. I think it's been gone for some time now. Anyway, there are currently 15,000 residents living on Wilmington Island that will be screwed when the tides start getting higher and higher. 33% of the livable land will be underwater by 2060 and by 2080. 80, around 70% of the land will be reclaimed by the ocean. It's not a good place to be. Now, there's another place even closer to the ocean that doesn't have as many people called Tybee Island, and that one's right on the water. So at least Wilmington Island is a little bit in, but Tybee will be gone before it is. It doesn't have as many people, but it, it's in bad shape once the water starts coming up. Number three, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Mount Pleasant is situated just north of Charleston with an increasing population. Currently, it sits at about 90,000 residents. The first white settlers arrived from England in July 6, 1680. And in 1696, some new settlers arrived. When they got there, each family was allotted several hundred acres in an area that became known as Christ Church Paris. Mount Pleasant is separated from Charleston by the Cooper River. For many years, the town was populated largely on a seasonal basis. Charleston residents, wealthy enough to afford a summer home across the river from Charleston, you know, they, that's where they bought. The population of Mount Pleasant was centered in the Old Village, as they call it. This place has seen some flooding over the years, so they're kind of used to it. Hurricane Hugo in 1989 and Matthew in 2008. 2016 and just recently Irma. The last major flooding, matter of fact, was a result of Hurricane Irma in 2017. If this keeps up, 40 years from now, 20% of the total livable land will be underwater. And in about 80 or 90 years, over 50% of the livable land will be underwater. They will definitely build a seawall around Charleston. I'm not sure about Mount Pleasant. Charleston, well, that's where Bill Murray lives and he'll probably live forever. So you got to keep Bill Murray safe, right? Number two, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Atlantic City is one of the biggest tourist destinations on the East Coast. The city on the Atlantic has about 40,000 year-round residents and sees about 27 million visitors annually. 27 million. 27 million tourists walking up and down that boardwalk with fanny packs on. Sad. This boardwalk and everything else could be wiped out, however, within the next several decades. With increasing sea levels, it is expected by 2060, flooding will cause around $1.5 billion in damages and about 50% the livable land they have today will be completely flooded. And by 2095, almost 93% of the land in Atlantic City will be completely underwater. Just the tips of buildings with far too many neon lights and in the floodwaters, casino chips with funnel cakes floating around the surface. It'll be a sad sight. 
And number one, all of the lower keys in Florida. The lower keys are the most at risk for total loss over the next several decades. Among the residents, it is expected that nearly 85% of them will have to relocate because 80% of the livable land they have today will be underwater by 2050 and 97% by 2090. So things don't look good for the lower keys. This could be extremely costly and would affect the area by up to $2.5 billion. That's today's money. 20, 30 years, probably looking at 5 billion. So if you're moving to the keys, make sure you don't take out like a big 30 year mortgage. The house won't probably be there at the end of the mortgage. So make sure you have homeowners insurance, at least with a lot of flood insurance. Water will be creeping up during the next couple decades. So yeah, you're going to need the flood insurance. The good news that in about 200 years, people can go scuba diving in a reef that was formed around hundreds of sunken golf carts. That's great. It's recycling golf carts. Does auto insurance cover golf carts? I don't know about that one. Sure, I'm sure you can get golf cart insurance. Anyway, basically the lower keys are the most at risk and it will be devastated within the next hundred years or less. All right, so that is my list. I hope you guys got some information out of it. Uh, it's not a very cheery outlook for a lot of these low-lying coastal cities and towns or whatever, or islands. So yeah, hopefully uh, things will change. Hopefully we can fix the situation. We're human beings. We're all in this together. We should be able to come together and fix it. Anyway, everybody have a great day. Don't forget all the links below. Buy a t-shirt. T-shirts are nice. They help out the channel. Give me a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.